Good evening. Despite the smile on my face, oh, I've had a bit of a rough weekend and I wanted to sort of give you a bit of an idea about it and sort of let you know how I handle that sort of situation and things that come my way. Sometimes you make things happen and sometimes things come your way. So I went, um, on Saturday afternoon, I went out to the eastern suburbs to visit a couple of friends of mine, a married couple. I've known them both since, since before they got married and they met where we worked together. So I know them both quite well. Um, my female friend and I were going to go out for a few drinks while her husband stayed home with the children. And, um, you know, we saw it as a good opportunity to, to go out and have some fun. So we, we, we had dinner together, the three of us, and um, then she and I got ready to go out and... We went out the front and as I do when I'm going out, especially if I'm going out where I'm going to be having a few drinks and, you know, get a bit loose and might misplace things, I put a passcode on my phone. So I do it all the time. It's the same passcode I've used for a long time. And so I put, plugged it in and I plugged it in again as it said to. That's all good. And a minute later I got a text and went to unlock my phone and couldn't unlock it. So somehow, some freak of nature kind of situation, I had inadvertently put in the wrong passcode twice. Who does that? I don't know. I must be, I don't know, crazy, lucky, special, I don't know. So that was pretty annoying. And I quickly said to her, all right, quick, quick, quickly Google this and see if there's a way we can get out of this. You know, I can undo this while it's still fresh in the phone. But we were standing outside the house at the time, waiting for our Uber, and suddenly she had no internet on her phone, which is bizarre because it was right, right outside her house. So we got into the Uber and went out to the first venue, which um, wasn't a flash venue by any stretch. And we just had one drink, had some chips, and, and decided to go next door, which was a pokies joint, not our thing at all. So by this stage i was starting to freak out about my phone and what i was going to do with it because i've been you know, i'm very attached to it like a lot of people are and um if you were if you were on here on saturday night you would know that i put a message on saying that i should feel very liberated without being able to use my phone but that was causing me some angst and so while we were out we had no phones between the two of us she could ring people but she couldn't look anything up so we had to call had to have the staff call a taxi for us which was fine and we went we asked where to go and the taxi driver took us to a nightclub which was not our thing it was teeny bopper central and they had a, an entry fee so we said no hell no we went next door thinking we'll salvage the night just have there's a bowling place next door and we'll go for some bowl, do some bowling or get a hot dog or just treat ourselves a little bit like the night was going bust my friend acknowledged that she probably should have put a bit more effort into finding some places but she doesn't go out much either who would have thought there would be not too many places to go to out there so you know it didn't matter we were just trying to roll with the punches and you know when you're with good company it doesn't really matter what you're doing so we, we weren't too bothered in that sense but underlying I was really stressed about my phone because while I'm with people and I'm not this I'm not it's not like I needed to be using it all the time, but not having it, it was very strange. It's, um, you know, I'm so used to having it there and people were texting and I couldn't reply and I tend to reply as soon as I can, even to say, I'll have to get back to you later, I'm, with, I'm out with a friend, that sort of thing. So, you know, I was getting a bit anxious about ignoring people and um, and so we, we then couldn't, couldn't get anything to eat there, so we decided to get into another taxi and go to another pub as we arrived at that pub that was already shut it was like 11 o'clock it was mental so we said to the taxi driver look you know the only way we're going to salvage this night and just really enjoy ourselves we obviously can't go out for a few drinks and a bit of a boogie so we'll go next door to kfc and we'll get a bucket which we never do who does that you know it's like tv land so we went to this through the drive-thru and um we had to wait for about 10 minutes or so to be served by the time it was our our turn and we tried to order they were out of chicken and they said we're actually closed and it's like well you're serving so what's going on and she said you can get burgers but that's it so we left we decided not to we still had pizza at home from our dinner so we went home and, and had that instead and, you know had a good chat with um with her husband and 
But the whole time he'd been home, there was a party next door. So we ended up, we couldn't go to sleep till about three in the morning. So by this stage, our tensions were pretty frayed. Um, not with each other, just in general. Like we just had everything thrown at us that night. Oh, and in the taxi, after, after the KFC incident, I said to the taxi driver, like, you would not believe our luck tonight. We've had terrible luck. And he said, oh, no, no, no. So I told him a few things. I said, next we'll have a car accident. And he said, no, don't say that. I said, no, nah, look, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Um, but I said, do you have enough petrol to get us home? Thinking, you know, it's a minimum. And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's all right, great. Out that base is covered. We'll get home safely. Five minutes later, my friend and I were just chatting away in the back, in the back seat. And then the driver said, um, by the way, we've had every single red light since you two got into the taxi. So clearly... <laughs> Luck was not going our way that night. Um, and unfortunately, he got um, embroiled in it. So we're at home and, you know, we eventually went to bed, couldn't sleep, had a very, very late night. In the morning, I got up and I went to to Apple and so they could see what they could do about fixing my phone. And look, much to my dismay, they told me that they'd have to reset my phone. So... I'm not a really te- technological person. I'm terrible with that sort of thing. And I usually end up having somebody help me out. And um, unfortunately, it meant that I hadn't, I hadn't backed up my phone since I got the phone in October last year. So I was devastated to think that I was going to lose a heap of photos, messages, text messages, statistics from my business, my business page, all sorts of memes that I'd saved to share for you. And it was just really upsetting. And... I, I honestly, I was trying to tell the guy in Apple store how, how devastating it was and how much I was going to lose. And I was like, it's not your fault. I know it's not your fault. You know, don't take it personally. I'm just really upset and I'm really... And he said, you know what? You're actually coping really, really well considering what you've just told me, what happened last night. Because, of course, I was like, oh, my God. It's like one more thing happening. Excuse the train. One more thing going wrong. And, you know, I don't know what's going on with this, but here it is. And um, it was funny because when he said, you're actually doing really well, that's when I started getting a bit teary. Um, because I, the, as I talked to him, I started thinking about all the other things I, I was losing and all that I'd lost. And the, I, I think some of the business, business stuff I can get back and, you know, I can go onto Facebook. It would take me a long time to get statistics from, um, you know, for the, the blog, the Facebook page has been around for a year or so now. And I post, as you know, 10 times a day, so that'd be really hard to get. But what I realised, um, the thing that has really upset me most is that I've lost the texts from my friend who died. So my friend who died earlier in the year, all the texts from October till then are gone. And, you know, of course that's really upsetting. As you can see, I'm getting upset now. But I'm not ashamed of that. It's, it's how it is. Um, I guess the thing is that what I'm doing is forgiving myself for fucking up, basically for putting the wrong code in. It's such a simple thing to do. I don't even know how I did it because, you know, I'll be out partying or out on a date or out with people and I'll be doing a million things at once and I have no trouble getting in and out of my phone. It was just a freak accident. Um, you know, obviously nobody died. It's nothing like that. It's just, it's disappointing. Um, but it's the, the things that I've lost that I'm most concerned about. But I'll get over it. I have to figure myself and I have to move on. And, you know, it could have tipped me over the edge. Um, but it's taught me that I have to be more careful in future. And I'm just going to have to educate myself a bit more and take uh, bite the bullet and get on with things and so that this doesn't happen again um so my train's here so i'll go now um but have yourselves a really good night and perhaps tell me how you would have thought about dealt with this maybe do you think it was bad luck or do you just think it was circumstance i don't know it's, it's all up to interpretation and uh all up to the way you oh excuse me the way you deal with it. So feel free to join in and we'll chat later.